As a 17-year-old, I was diagnosed with something called an osteosarcoma. Many of you will know what that is. It meant that I had to have six months of chemotherapy and I had my left leg amputated below the knee. It's good that, wasn't it? Yeah. This, this table lights it. I appreciate over there, you know, maybe it didn't work. So, so, so who here would find that demotivating? Most people. Okay, right. So what I want to do is I want to share with you why for me it became the most motivating thing that ever happened to me. And I, I want to give you some insights that I've picked up along my journey about taking personal responsibility, about teamwork, and about what being the best you can be means for me. Now, I'd been a lazy county swimmer as a teenager. It's one of these really annoying kids who thought they were fantastic, or whatever they did, but when it came to training, I would just turn up and I would talk to my friends. And I was never going to be any better than this lazy county swimmer. But when I got diagnosed, I said to my dad, I said, I'd like to see how good I can be at swimming now. You know, have a bit of a change of attitude and, and put some effort in. Um, do you think there are some competitions out there for people with disabilities? Because we didn't know anything about this world. It was a new thing for us. And he said, I will find out for you. And he got onto the telephone and he entered me into the Disabled Swimming Nationals before I had my leg amputated. So you, you, you think you've got challenging conversations to have, yeah? You know, this one went a bit like this. Hello there, I'd like to enter my son into the Disabled Nationals, please. Certainly, sir, was his disability. Hasn't got one yet. That is a bit weird, okay? But that was, that was my dad's way of showing belief in me. And when you've got difficult times ahead of you, it's really important you've got people around you showing belief in you. And it helped me through a really tough time. He took me swimming for the first time the day after I had the stitches out of my leg, um, about, about eight days after my operation, still in the middle of all my chemotherapy. In fact, I'd only ha had one chemo. I had another five to go. And, um, and he started coaching me. And within six months, I was swimming quicker with one leg than before when I had two and I've been a county standard swimmer. And after 18 months, I was good enough, lucky enough, to go to the Paralympic Games in Seoul. And when I was there, I won two gold medals, a silver and two bronze medals. And I thought that was, that was a pretty big turnaround. I'd gone from being very, very ill to 18 months later, I was representing my country. I was winning medals, which was fantastic. But almost more importantly for me was I was representing my family. It's a huge opportunity for me to give something back to them that helped me through a really, really tough time. And I was trying to do three events by the time it came for me to go to Atlanta in 1996. The, the 400 freestyle, the 100, uh, the 100 backstroke, and the medley relay, 34-point relay. And I went to the Olympic trials to try and qualify for the British team. And the first event for me to try and qualify in was the front of freestyle. So I dived in, and I'm swimming along, a little bit like this. And I got to the end, and I touched the wall, and I turned around and looked at the scoreboard. Now, the scoreboard is about 20 times the size of this screen. And on the scoreboard, it said, Mark Woods, world record. I'm like, oh, yes. I like the sound of that. That's got quite a nice ring to it, I thought. I was strutting around poolside feeling really pleased with myself. I win the 100 backstroke, too. So I'm automatically going to the games, and I'm automatically in the relay. Fantastic. I go to Atlanta, and in the morning of the 400 freestyle, I've got to try and qualify, qualify for the final. So I dive in again, swim along again, get to the end, touch the wall, turn around, look at the scoreboard, and I can see that I'm the fastest qualifier. World record holder, fastest qualifier. Things are looking great for tonight. Get to the final, dive in again, swim along again, get to the end, touch the wall, turn around, look at the scoreboard, broke the world record, yes. Came third. And I, how does that work? And I turn around and I look at the scoreboard again and I realise, yeah, I've broken my old world record, but two people have broken it half a second before me and I've come third. And I was pretty disappointed. And there are a couple of things that athletes are very, very good at. The first thing that we're very good at is we're very good at listening to feedback. If somebody comes up to me and says, Mark, I saw what we did there, it wasn't very good, was it? If you did it like this, it'd be a lot better. For me, that's like, oh, thank you. Thank you for telling me. Does it work like that for you guys? Oh, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? When somebody tells you you might be able to do your job better. And I understand why it's difficult. But for an athlete, it's absolutely critical to listen to feedback. Because if you don't, you're restrained by your own beliefs and understandings of what's possible, how to go about things. You're never going to achieve your true potential. So we always listen to feedback. I was pretty disappointed. Can you imagine what that felt like? You know, I really thought we had a team that could win, then to lose by such a small margin. 
But like I said before, whenever we do anything, we always review what we do. And I went through everything. Looked at how I trained, how the other guys trained. Did we eat the right food? Did we get to Atlanta in time to get over the jet lag? Get used to the humidity? Went through everything. And it wasn't until I watched that video back and I saw the four faces of the guys of the team stood there with their silver medals around their necks and I saw happy guy, sad guy, happy guy, sad guy. I thought to myself, what are you two smiling at? We lost. Why is that a good result? And at that moment in time, it just dawned on me, we had a group of individuals who had completely different objectives. And if you've got that kind of thing going on in your team, you're really unlikely to achieve your true potential. Two of us wanted a win, and two were happy to come second or third. And there was a big, big difference between those two things. And I totally failed to realise that was what was going on. You know, I assumed we all wanted the best possible outcome, but it was a silly assumption to make. I guess if you look back across that story, there's been quite a lot of challenge in there. And challenges can be great, can't they? Sometimes you can choose a challenge for yourself um, and enjoy the journey towards trying to achieve that challenge. But more often than not, challenges are just dropped on you. Life has a habit of dropping challenges on you. And you wouldn't wish them for yourselves, so you, and you, 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 you wouldn't wish them upon anybody. But you can choose the behaviours you display when you face up to those challenges. Um, I'd like to think that I've, um, I've chosen some good behaviours so far in my life. I hope that I continue to do so. And um, I hope you all choose to be exceptional at whatever it is you want to do, whether it's personally or professionally, hopefully both. And I hope you all choose to continue to be and start to be valued members of this team. Thank you very much.